Hey everybody, welcome to the Song Revolution Podcast, brought to you by Nashville Christian Songwriters. Nashville Christian Songwriters exists to empower Christian songwriters worldwide. I'm John Chisholm, and this podcast exists to bring you valuable songwriting insights, inspiration, interviews, and just all around good fun with some of the greatest songwriters, producers, arrangers, artists, and creatives, and beyond. You can find out a whole lot more about us at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. Hey everybody, John here. If you've ever wanted a behind-the-scenes peek into the Christian music industry, I've got just that for you today with the director of Word Worship, Jonathan Mason. Jonathan stopped by the studio recently to chat with us about what he's up to at Word Worship, their mission to resource the church, and to give us some insights into what Nashville music publishers are really looking for. Jonathan is a graduate of Moody Bible Institute, and he's just got a deep passion for music and ministry. He's been a worship leader in the local church as well as a musician in a nationally touring band, so he understands the stress and the demands placed on worship leaders to find the kind of songs that can become powerful expressions of praise. It was just a few years ago that the group he was in disbanded, and he found himself becoming an executive on Music Row, overseeing other songwriters and worship artists such as Meredith Andrews, Benji and Jenna Coward, and a whole lot more you're going to hear about in our interview today. Word Worship serves worship leaders all over the world by bringing the best in current worship music, helping cut through the noise to discover the songs that will help bring the church into a deeper expression of love and praise to God. And you can check out all their resources and sign up for some freebies over at wordworship.com. Jonathan is authentic, passionate about God and the songwriters he serves, and his heart is to resource the church worldwide, as you'll hear in this episode. We're proud to have Word Worship as our sponsor today, so let's go behind the scenes in the professional Christian music business with Word Worship's Jonathan Mason. All right, well, hey, Jonathan, welcome to the new NCS podcast studio today. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah, you, you pulled up in your banana uh, Jeep on a kind of a cool, crisp day here in Nashville. It's fun, fun he- stuff. Headed down to Music Row. Yes, sir. Cool, cool, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Now, you guys are sponsoring us right now. Thanks for that. And you've been director of Word Worship for about four years now? Four years, yeah. yeah. How did you come to be the director there? Well, um, kind of a, a long... How, how far back do you want me to go? Hey, well, <laughs> uh, not to birth, but... <laughs> yeah. um, well, I moved to Nashville five years ago, actually, with a Christian worship band. And the way I, I connected with Word Worship, it was through really the relationships that started in that band after we got here. Like many other bands that have moved to Nashville, uh, we disbanded and mm-hmm. kind of realized once we were here that um, there's a lot of other bands that are doing exactly what we're doing. And uh, But we all had passions to serve and to play in the Christian music industry and uh, to continue to do ministry. And uh, an opportunity came up just in a, a meeting I had with a songwriter I was working with. Uh, he, he pulled me into a meeting with uh, the, it was the president of Word Entertainment's wife who worked in A&R. And in the meeting, she started talking about uh, this role that I'm currently in, that they're looking for somebody that had uh, theological understanding, but also knew what it was like to travel in a band, also knew uh, what it was like to work in a church and just the the landscape of congregational worship. And I, when I heard her talk about it, to be honest, at first I was like, that's really cool. I could never do that. And I was still actually traveling with the band at the time. Um, but as time went on, it was about six months later, it just came back to mind. I was praying with my wife and... Uh, the rest is history without going into all the long details, but I just, I couldn't not pursue the opportunity. Wow. Uh, it just was everything I wanted, and it seemed like my whole life had lined up to the role that I'm now in. Wow. So it's funny how God does that, right? Oh, yeah. Kind of gets you trained up, and uh, I, nothing's wasted, right? No, definitely not. I, I often say if I tried to prepare for the job that I'm currently working in, I never would have got it, but... <laughs> because I, I believe I just continued to follow uh, the desires God put in my heart along the way. It seemed like he had me do really random things in the moment that 
were exactly what I needed to do for the preparation. Really? Yeah. Can you think of any other things that were random that would be, I mean, you were a musician, well, yeah. you were in a band. So, I mean, that's kind of an immediate tie-in, but what about the business side of things? Yeah, I went to school for business for a year right out of high school. And uh, it was actually denominationally, uh, I think there's kind of a randomness too, but I went to a, a, a business school that was a Catholic school. And so I got to at least see how, Catholicism was practiced day in and day out. Uh, and then I transferred after that. I really felt a call to full-time ministry, and I transferred into an Assembly of God Bible school. Oh! And then the band I was playing with started traveling a lot more, so I transferred to a distant study to Moody Bible Institute. There you go. <laughs> and, so I, I, and then I actually, uh, when I was working at church, was going to Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, so I'm a very hodgepodge of a denominational mess here. But they were, <laughs> they were all... Uh, moments in time where I got to see uh, really for what I'm doing now, people, their display of worship as they gather in drastically different ways uh, mm. that I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't have any other way. I really yeah. gained a lot from all so those it's things. It's kind of an eclectic uh, experience there. Yeah. Trans denominational. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's a little bit of business, a whole lot of church some training <laughs> there and a whole so, lot of church, a whole lot of church so that you can deal very effectively with different artists and songwriters and know what you're walking yeah. into in any situation. Mm. Right. Yeah. Well, I think by, by being affiliated with a lot of different denominations, I can, uh, have a, a way to see different, how different words might matter to certain people. And also, uh, maybe, how to take away certain roadblocks that would be there in, in songs. If if there's a certain word or certain way that a song's uh, speaking about something that we could maybe, uh, I don't want to say water down, but um, we don't want to leave roadblocks in there to keep songs from being used in different nations. Right, right. There's just maybe reword that, a little yeah. bit where it's, you're not dumbing it down or watering it down, but just choosing a different phrase that yeah. would not be offensive to uh, one particular yeah. audience, right? Yeah, not uh, truth certainly matters, but there's ways that you can word things that um, would be understood in multiple right. areas. Yeah. Right. So, were you a songwriter in the band that you were in? Uh, a little bit. I was more of the editor. I think. I think they actually made a joke and called me the the chief uh, theological watchdog or something. You know, I, <laughs> I would more uh, you know go through and um, if there was something a little off or if it could be misunderstood I'd oftentimes be maybe we should rethink that yeah all right so really the the same role you're doing now you were already practicing in the band yeah I was a I was a publisher and didn't even know it (laughs) there you go natural born publisher well what how would you describe the mission of word worship well that's a great question um currently it's actually changed a bit since I started but when I when I began the work there uh it was it was more leaning into an A&R and publishing role and, and uh, Meredith Andrews was signed to Word Worship Music and over the years it's it's turned a bit towards more of a, a platform for marketing uh, where we're trying to uh, become a, a platform uh, through social media, through Instagram and Facebook and all the different places that people people go to to look for songs. We're just trying to be uh, more of a Switzerland in a sense where we can help people wade through all the releases. I find that there's so much music coming out these days that and and the the problem is that the places people go to find as as worship leaders, the places people go to find new songs, oftentimes uh, they are based out of just a, a certain group of songwriters or worship leaders, and so they're only getting a piece of the kingdom, so to speak. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm turning the corner to try to make word worship a place that people can go to find out what's new in general uh, across the whole board, whether it's you know a capital uh, recording artist or somebody with Bethel or somebody with Sony or uh, and on and on it goes. That's our that's our hope. That's our goal. Okay. It's just to help people to wade through the noise. So you, for the resources then you guys would be developing, you're open to using anyone's songs from any of the streams. Yeah, and the the cool thing with the digital world we live in uh, is it makes sense as to why most of the the previous uh, websites that were doing things that only work within their artists and their writers' uh, works were that they'd have to get uh, permission to use the resources, chord charts and lead sheets and lyrics and MP3s, etc. But uh, I've found that by uh, just pointing people to where they can get the things, now we're not hosting people's actual chord charts, etc. We're really just becoming a landing page where people can find all of the links for the multi tracks and 
uh, lyrics and song select, like how to properly report things, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's yeah. great. So a Switzerland in a way that you are, I don't know, a clearinghouse is even a, a very good way to say it, but more where uh, you're not just promoting word or curb word artist yeah. and uh, word worship songwriters uh i write with a, f- a couple of them mm. so it's, it's so fun to come down to music row and your writer's rooms are killer down uh-huh. there by the way it's so fun and uh but to be there so so really resourcing is at the heart of this for you yeah i think it's just a matter of uh something we say often is that we want to let the church hear its own song and so we just want to be a spotlight toward what God's doing around the community here, but also around the world. We just, we find that because of the position uh, we are in as a company, we get to hear songs early on. We get people sending us songs as they're rising up in different areas of the country. And we want to turn and let uh, let people find those uh, right. earlier on versus waiting until they might go through all the streams of the the business of okay. radio and having another artist cut it, et cetera, et cetera. Seems like they would be challenging for to, to get that message out to people, to help them understand that you are being a resource and not just promoting word, curb yeah. word artists. Yeah, and I will say we're turning a corner. So we're it's, it's a process. We're working on a new website, and it's all part of uh, what we're about to release. Right. So in the past, it has been just like everybody else. I mean... Uh, just to again clarify something like worship together people often think like oh it's a it's a resource and it is but people have to realize that that's just capital records artists and writers right right. Uh, and it's the same with essential worship is just sony uh, for the most part and so for us it really was just a curb word site Uh, but we are transitioning and moving towards and yeah i just if it if it is a value, we want to have links and connect people to it. Okay, kind of kind of like CCLI Song Select is doing, or a Praise Charts resource site. They do have everybody. It's just a matter of we want to have all the links to everything. So God, yeah. if you go to Song Select, they're not going to have the links to every single you know devotional that's connected to the song or the multi-tracks uh, for the song or pro presenter download for the song. Wow. It's, yeah. We would like to have it all housed in one place. Wow. I've used all of those yeah. resources and they're yeah. fantastic, of course. So what are the uh, curb word artists that you work with? Now, we had Meredith uh, recently on the show and uh, love, love, loved her. Uh, she's deep and uh, she was she was really ready to preach and <laughs> bring, a, bring a, a teaching that on that show, which I love her. Her and love her music and have for a long time. So, what are the who are the artists you uh, work with, and what's a typical day for you? Yeah. So, as far as the curb word roster goes, uh, everything that is written for congregational worship, I'm going to have my hands on one way or another. Again, tr- to try to bridge it to the church world for worship leaders to hear. Uh, as far as what I'm working on uh, more closely, Meredith Andrews project the faith and wonder album that came out is something that i worked on with her uh, zealand worship natalie grant big daddy weave sidewalk prophets they're all artists that we're currently working with our, as far as our roster goes i mean it goes deeper to mallory hope sarah reeves dan bremness francesca who's just on your show uh, loving the outcome we have a hip-hop label with Stephen malcolm ty brazel uh, and actually the hip-hop uh, A&R Joseph, he's actually a r for, for King Country. We are Messengers, Stars Go Dim, uh, Blanca, and wow. a couple others that are in the process yeah. of signing. So there's a, it's a big roster, but there's a it lot is. of names that I, I am sure a lot of your listeners will recognize. Absolutely. Now, Stars Go Dim are on tour with Francesca yes. right now. Yeah. yeah. Man, he can sing. I don't know if you've, if you've caught a concert. I have. Or, oh, I my have. goodness. Yeah. It's amazing. He, and he, I mean, back to how so much connects with worship music in general. He was a worship leader uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma for years and years. So many of the artists on our roster were worship leaders or still are worship leaders in their home church. It's Absolutely. really cool to see how, um, I think all things start and end in the church. <laughs> right, exactly, right? Yeah. And I know you work with uh, Benji and Jenna Coward. Yeah. And they're, they are amazing. Yeah. I, I, uh, I just really respect their writing, you know, a lot. So what's a typical day like for you working with these people? Well, um, sometimes I stop on my way into the city to go on a podcast there like this. Yeah, welcome. Uh, a lot of times, I mean, even on the way here, I, I told you I was listening to your 
podcasts and listening to different things that uh, our artists and writers are connected with. But also I was listening to new songs that had just been turned in over the weekend for my mm. writers. Uh, so there's a lot of, because I work on both the publishing side and the A&R side, there's a lot of listening to new songs from uh our team, but also songs that are getting pitched to us for other artists that we work with to release. So just a lot, a lot of listening. Uh, and then a lot of feedback where it's applicable. Um, a lot of, unfortunately, the side I don't love is the administrative side of keeping track of all the songwriters and uh, credits that are involved in the recordings and all this and getting everything turned in, all the due dates and Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. (laughs) But there's a lot of that. And then, uh, quite frankly, just meetings all the time. A lot of new artists and writers that are coming through, just trying to keep up to date on what's happening. And uh, that's, I think that that sums it up. I eat a lot of food. I eat a lot, a lot of Mexican food. (laughs) Hey, yeah. You're looking good. Airports and restaurants. I know, right? That's what they've been saying. So as you're meeting with a lot of these different new artists and songwriters, are you seeing any trends? emerging trends in their writing or in the church <clears throat> yes uh and, th- and this is where it's hard to to find things that actually stick out but one of the biggest trends is just and it's been like this forever i'm sure people just copying what's already been done just rewriting the same songs so it's pretty easy to to hear people's influences in their writing and and what they're creating but it's when there's certain things that that poke through that are just so original and are written out of real places. That's the key too, is you can hear when people are just writing because they want to be known for being a writer. You can hear hear when, when bands release songs because they just want to get attention for being a band. But you can also hear when somebody writes a song out of such a real place, whether they've you know walked through losing a loved one or they're in the middle of a family feud, the biggest fight of their life. Or I mean, when things seem impossible, that's usually when amazing songs come about when people are in, in deep, deep need. It's also when things are the best they've ever been. When people write songs that are celebrating and just enjoying, uh, on the Christian side, enjoying who God is and what they've enabled them to do. Hey, we're going to take just a quick break from the show so that we can let you in on some amazing things happening around here at Nashville Christian Songwriters. Hey guys, John Chisholm here, and I want to invite you to come hang out with me and some very special friends at the upcoming NCS Weekend Intensive. The NCS Weekend Intensive is a three-day coaching, teaching, and networking experience where you get to come to Nashville and meet my great pro songwriter and music business friends, people like Kenneth Turner West, who's written over 30 number one songs, and John Mays, founder and A&R director of Centricity Music, home of great artists like Lauren Daigle, Jason Green, Ray, Johnny Diaz, Andrew Peterson, and so many more. Lifeway Worship's creative director, Craig Adams, will be joining us in April, as well as the premier live music producer, Tom Jackson, who's worked with a bunch of amazing people like Lecrae, Sean Mendez, Francesca Battistelli, Phillips Craig and Dean, and a budding young talent you might remember, Taylor Swift. We've got three hands-on coaching sessions where you get real-time feedback on your songs to get you to the next level, and our stellar clinic missions bring you world-class teaching to empower and inspire you like never before. And these events fill up fast, so we're offering a pre-registration option where you can register early and save a hundred bucks, and that's a great deal for anybody. NCS Weekend Intensives are happening in April, July, and October, so you can get to the one that's right for you. Just jump over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com, click the Weekend Intensive link to read about it, and pre-register today. Hey, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you soon at the NCS Weekend Intensive. Well, I just hope that you'll take advantage of that and check it out. All right? We bring you good stuff here on the Song Revolution Podcast. So back to our episode. So what's your favorite part about working with artists and songwriters? My favorite part? I I love... uh, I love... It's hard to word this. I love seeing the joy on an artist's face when they they get to walk in what they're created to do. And I know that we're playing a part in that, that we're helping to enable them to do the ministry God's called them to. Um, because that's not always the case. Oftentimes people get kind of dragged into doing things that 
they might not feel called to do. And there's always a, a place for both of sometimes you just have to stick it out and and uh, do the hard things. But when people really uh, are stepping out into this area of freedom where they're doing that, God's opened up for them. I just, I can't get enough of it. Mm, mm. So seeing someone step into the fullness of their gifts, maybe, yeah. and find new ways to express themselves. Yeah, when, their when, mission. I think when, when we're able to break down some doors and allow them to run through and, uh, yeah, do what they love. It's it's exciting. Mm. So how do you guide the the artist and the songwriters to write more original or innovative or personal or authentic uh, kinds of songs? I mean, you you said a moment ago, and I might double back on this <clears throat> question because uh, you know the obviously people do copy all the time. I hear it in mm-hmm. my work where it's like, okay, you're just copying you know Chris Tomlin or, or whoever, but uh, you know, as you're coaching them, because you're sitting in the role of pastor, coach, mentor in a way uh, to these artists and songwriters, how do you inspire in them authenticity and, and originality, maybe? Well, I, I will uh, be very honest and say the writers we're working with are so, uh, they're so good at what they do that I'm not hitting them up every day being like you did this wrong this wrong this wrong and this wrong it's usually if they're asking for input or uh you know if something oftentimes we respond to the songs that are so good we're usually like man this song is amazing maybe just make this little tweak um but as far as maybe helping to guide uh without mentioning the name of the songwriter i there, there's a songwriter that's so talented and so gifted lyrically. And I remember having a conversation just about, uh, I might not have worded it this way with him, but I think of him as a Ferrari, you know, and that he could go 200 miles an hour down the highway. But uh, as far as writing in our modern landscape for worship music goes, um, I've encouraged him to to pull things back and just give me the golden nugget of all all the, like the whole main idea that he's, he's creating just give me that golden nugget and that probably is something the church of today will want to sing and remember Uh, so uh, maybe an idea like that that's one way that i've said look this is how you can stay original this is how you can stay fresh and current is by um summarizing for the the congregational worship side of things right well that that makes sense so uh, i do want to go back to the question i asked a moment ago maybe from a different angle do you see god doing anything uniquely different in the church today as you're listening through a thousand songs Hmm. a month? Uh, One of the coolest things that I've been able to see, and at first I think I I thought that it was people copying each other, but one of the the coolest things I've seen God do is really give uh, these these hymn writers of our day, we'll say, the the same key message over a period of time. And so I'll start to see you know, ten songs come in with the same, the same idea. Uh, something that's out now, so I, I have no problem saying it. But um, there's definitely this. There's definitely been a period of uh, worship being our weapon. You know that that we sing through the battle. Uh, a song that I can think of that's currently very popular. That song "Surrounded" that Michael W. Smith uh, re-recorded, and uh, this is how I fight my battles. But it's. I saw over a period of two years, probably more than 10 songs come in like that, that uh, it seems as if God is just planting these ideas in his people's hearts and minds. And it's these songs, in a sense, can be uh, be weapons for his people for mm. the, the time that we're in. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, so you have kind of a vantage point of seeing what we might call uh, <laughs> more of a prophetic move, um, a sense of kind of what's real current on God's heart. Uh, it's, it certainly seems that way. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, how does that make you feel? <laughs> uh, it's it's an honor. And, yeah. and again, I think that over time, though, that same thing will start to get copied, you know, um, because that's already out. That's already right. It seems to have already been on God's heart, and we're we're hearing it now. But those songs were written a couple of years ago, exactly. And so it's what is God doing today? Yeah, yeah. Are you see it? I mean, are you seeing any patterns in songs right now? Man, um, I hesitate to say because then I, I know your listeners will start writing. Well, I'll go write them. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, I am. There's there's yeah. a certain there's a certain idea that I've noticed in a few songs just this last week that. Um, 
I'm like, oh wow, here's here's another one. Yeah, mm, yeah, mm. it's cool. Yeah, and and I don't want to manipulate that. I'm not going to send out an email. Here, here's here's another answer to your question. I'm not going to send out an email and say, hey guys, everybody start writing a song around this idea because I'm noticing that it's coming yeah, in a lot. Right, right. But I will say, hey, here's ten words or ten ideas that. I, I would ask you not to put in your song because they're really? so overdone because they're right. so, uh, you know, like it, people will probably laugh to say it, but you know, like move the mountains, giants fall, chains falling, uh, things like that. I mean, they're just, they're in so many songs right now that if, if you write a song about moving mountains, it's probably not yeah, going to break exactly. through. Yeah. Kind of like the, all the water references were yeah. a few years back, you know, oceans mm-hmm. where feet may fail and all that. Mm-hmm. And suddenly we had ro- water, the obligatory yeah. water reference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and history repeats itself. So a lot of these things will come back, but right now it's probably not the best time for the giants or the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Although God is faithful to yeah. slay them and bring yeah. them down. And we're very, we're ha- very happy yeah. to know how we should fight our battles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I, I've watched as trends, you know, come and go through my career and uh, it's amazing. And, 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 and maybe respond to this, Jonathan, because I have sometimes uh, people will say, well, there's just nothing new to say in worship. How do you feel about that? We're commanded to sing a new song unto the Lord, so there has to be a place for new songs. Um, I think that we look back, we're definitely not singing the way that they sang in Scripture. And it's, I'm just filling in blanks here, but it seems like God didn't give us the musical style or the musical language in the in the Scriptures, so we'd continue to stay current and continue to, to create new things. That's just my, my guess, I don't know. Um, but it seems like singing is... For many, um, we're commanded to sing in, in Ephesians, obviously, to one to another and to God, but it seems like it's a, a way for us all to unite in prayer. And our prayers change, don't they? I think our prayer for the church today would be uh, different than our prayer for the church in one sense, in, in, in smaller senses than it was 100 years ago, but we're seeing different things and there's more specific ways that we can uh, ask God to do things. Mm. Wow, that's fantastic. And we are commanded to to pray and sing and psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And uh, I, I I think that when someone says that to me, I say it in, uh, I say it in nice ways, but I always think, okay, you're just not paying attention. You're not digging deeply enough into your own heart and into your own spirit to let God reveal himself in deeper ways. We had a song challenge for our NCS membership recently, and it was to write a worship song without the word worship or presence. Those Hmm. two words, you couldn't use those. And it's fascinating uh, what you know what uh, comes out and you think of uh, great songs like uh uh Matt Redman um uh, you know bless the lord on my soul yeah. 10,000 reasons mm-hmm. you know that was so fresh when it hit a few years back and yeah. it took the world uh you know by storm and into a mm-hmm. deeper place of worship by just basically paraphrasing psalm 103 yeah and not being a verbatim scripture song but something that that he brought the application, you know, uh, on that day when my strength is failing, mm-hmm. et cetera. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I think there's always something new. It's just how can we capture that uh, from a from a pure heart and a, a place of authenticity, maybe. Yeah. So what would you say to aspiring artists and songwriters, uh, people that are outside the commercial Nashville bubble who want to grow in their gifts? You just said authenticity, but often I will just remind people to be authentic and to do things with purpose. So often that that is seen by them being faithful to their local community that they're in, whether they're they're leading worship or whether they're um, using their music evangelistically uh, or playing, you know, like just entertaining at a coffee shop locally. I think it all starts uh, the in the local area where it's the whole bloom where you're planted thing. It's, it's legit. I mean, um, it's my story of we, we stayed, the band I was with stayed in the new England area for 10 years before we moved to Nashville. And although we did disband everybody that we were with, um, moved into a calling that, that God had opened up that exceeded what we were doing. Uh, and I, I 
point it back to. We bloomed where we were planted. We learned what we needed to learn. Uh, and we, we remained faithful in the areas that God had us. And so it's the same for people that ask for the advice. It's just stay faithful, be authentic, write, write with a purpose. And um, when you bloom where you're planted, those people will be the ones that launch you in due time. <laughs> mm, yeah. If wow. it's God's purpose for you to, to go bigger than that area, they will be your biggest supporters. Wow. Well said. Well, Jonathan Mason from Word Worship, thanks for being here today on The Song Revolution. Thanks for having me. Hey, what a fantastic show today. I hope you caught all the value bombs that were dropped on this one and that you'll begin to immediately incorporate them into your songwriting. You know, you can get even more valuable songwriting tools and inspiration when you join NCS membership. You can become a part of a growing community of songwriters from around the world and tap into some of the most powerful resources available to step you up in your songwriting destiny. Check out NCS membership now at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and get ready for some exponential power to help you fulfill your call to write. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.